Hi beautiful souls, I am Katerina Kat and welcome to my Philadelphia studio. So on this episode, I would love to just show you how I create my paintings. Now, I'm not gonna be able to finish the whole painting, but you'll get to see the process and how the work evolves from the underpainting to the layers and the darks and the lights that I put in. So I hope you enjoy it. And I also wanted to show you some of my favorite materials before I go ahead and show you the process. Well, no, not the most important thing. So <laughs> I love to use these brushes by Rosemary Brush Company. And these are the Dennis Perrin collection. Dennis Perrin was one of my mentors and one of the first online courses I have ever taken. And these brushes are amazing if you paint a la prima, which means wet on wet. Um, they're great for blocking in large areas, but these are great for blocking in a work that's kind of more impressionistic or expressionistic. So check them out. Rosemary brushes are incredible, but they also have a ton of other sets. This is just my favorite. And it's a way for me to also honor Dennis, who's no longer with us, um, rest in peace. But he has really transformed the way that I paint. So I love Williamsburg, <laughs> Williamsburg oil paints. I think they're the best. I also love this French brand Charvin, which is like a little bit of a splurge. Oops, there you go. A little bit of a splurge, but they have some really unique colors that are tough to blend. Um, but I also use Gamblin and I use Winsor & Newton. So I pretty much use everything, but make sure when, if you're a professional and you want to create lasting works, make sure you invest in archival quality artist grade paint. So most Williamsburg paints are artist grade. Let me grab So for cleaning my brushes before I wash them with artist soap, I use something called Gamsol and you can get a big big bottle of it. Um, for quick drying medium, I use Liquin. But if I have, if I don't need it to be quick dry, I usually use uh, linseed oil and Williamsburg has a fabulous linseed oil. Let me show you. So this bottle is very, very painted on, but it's that Williamsburg linseed oil. And then one of the most life-saving things that I've learned from my friend Erica Sears is this paint squeezy thingy, which you'll see me using. It saves so much paint. So if you don't have one of these, it's like $20 on Amazon, totally worth your investment. And finally, to clean up, this is a great brush cleaner. Um, you'll be seeing a little video of me cleaning my brushes at the end. So make sure that you invest in a good brush cleaner, especially if you're investing into something like rosemary brushes, which are a bit expensive. So you wanna make sure you preserve them. And mine lasts like about a year. So I think it's, it's worth the investment. And I think that's about it. So I have my easel, I have painting that I started that I'll be working on, a little rolly cart from Ikea, palettes, all the goodies. So let's get started. First things first, I'm gonna be taking you on a little tour of my Philadelphia studio. I'm located at the Carpenter Street Studios in South Philly, and it is such a cool old building. The stairs are a little scary, <laughs> but I'm going to be guiding you on a little tour because especially now that the weather is nice at the time of recording this, I love to walk around outside and get a cup of coffee. So here we are, exiting out into the bright parking lot. It's a very rustic and we have a cool mosaic on our parking lot wall. So it's really and of course I enjoy seeing the spring blooms while I was in 
recording this video. It was the first Buds, and here's my favorite coffee shop, Function Coffee. So refreshing to just walk around and get that caffeine to fuel some painting. So let's get back to the studio. approaching our studio building this is our cool factory building got to show off that coffee and come inside welcome to my building First things first, we have to squeeze out some paint and arrange our palette. And I typically start with a red or a deep brown underpainting. This is how I draw on the canvas. So as I mentioned before, I use artist grade paint by either Williamsburg or Charvin. And I love to just use a disposable palette so the cleanup is a little bit easier. This is pretty much how I begin a canvas. I get my reference image if I'm at the studio. When I'm at home or plein air, I love to work from life, but when we're working this big, it's a little challenging. So I use my own reference photos. I get this question a lot. And I typically create my underpainting or the underdrawing with deep red, red, brown paint. So. Here you see me establishing the plumb lines and getting those value maps down on the canvas so that I know where to apply the color, my favorite part. And as we continue to work on the underpainting you see how much it's developed this is a few hours of work of course you're not going to watch a whole video of <laughs> me painting because that would take a really long time and you probably get bored but this is how the painting comes together at the very beginning
Well, thank you so much for coming and painting with me. I am going to go ahead and drive home. It was a long day of painting and recording things, and I'm excited to go get a good workout in at the gym, and then maybe do some editing and sketching at night. Thank you so much, I'll see you on the next video. Leave a comment if you enjoyed seeing my behind the scenes, and let me know if you want to learn something new next time, or if you have any questions. I'll see you on the next video.